who's on the management educational design team with Andy Online, um, chairing this session, um, which is a session of presentations on the theme course and curriculum design. So just a couple of quick words I'll say to see if you thoughts we have framed what you might think about during the session. I would say that the idea of a curriculum in higher education is actually fairly contested. You'll see varying ways to describe or talk about depending on where you go who you talk to. So the point I want to make here is that it's often highly contextual. And that's a really good framing, I think, for this session. Because the first two presentations look at curriculum from quite different contexts and perspectives. The third talk, thank you, will then do a, a deeper dive into course design and really drawing out some principles of course design. And then the final um, presentation um, will zoom back out to that quite a broader context and perspective on that notion of curriculum. Um, so that's sort of our journey pathway in, in this session. Um, our speakers are Chris Brown from Kex up first, then Arnika Ferguson from Law, um, and then Timothea Turnbull from um, Cat. Sorry, I have only met Timothy for the first time about 10 minutes ago, so apologies for the little pause there. Um, and then lastly, uh, Tom Worthington from Kex. Um, and so with those words, I'll just speak to logistics. Everyone has 15 minutes for their presentation, and we'll hold the questions because we'll save five minutes at the end for questions as well. And you'll notice that I have a five minutes left sign and a please wrap up now sign as well. So we'll try and stick to some time in there. Um, so we've got space for questions. Um, okay. Thanks very much. Chris, cool. what was I might just try and dim the lights and see if that works a little bit. Beautiful. Um, so before I start, I'd just like to build on um, Sam's filler in language acknowledgement of country this morning uh, and pay my respects to elders, past and present, and also sort of recognise that we have a lot to learn in the engineering space about engineering design uh, from Indigenous elders. So we're going to talk today a bit about reimagining project-based learning in engineering. Uh, and I think you've all probably heard the terminology of project-based learning. We're really trying to think about this in a completely different way. Um, and I'll just start coming through. So we're looking at a project that we're calling Applied Major Project Learning. Uh, and we're coming to the word Amplify, and we're testing it out a little bit. So hopefully you can give us some feedback on that. It's a bit of a strange slide, but thinking about our own country, um, is it, this should be a familiar place um, for those on campus in <coughs> chemistry. Um, what we tend to think about with our projects is that they're constrained. And so I'm going to use this as a bit of a metaphor for the way of thinking about what we do in um, coursework. So we tend to sort of set up the environment, we try to make it interesting, we try and put some features in there, but it's fairly constrained, it's fairly contrived. Uh, and by the time we get to the end, students could have just stood up uh, in the pond and got their way across it. Um, what we're trying to do, I suppose, is move towards something that's a bit more free-flowing, something that's a bit more long-term, something that maybe is a bit of a journey, something that might take uh, a bit of serious effort to navigate. Something that might open some opportunity for some occasional chaos, uh, for things to go wrong, uh, but also to try and do that within the boundaries of, the, of safe banks. Something that also allows us from covering some hidden exploration, so some entry and exit points, some nice features, uh, and also some, some sort of nice things that you might see across the way. So why reimagine projects? Projects are something that, um, that are kind of a core to what engineers do. Uh, but what we're seeing is that there's a really big gap between um, what we're delivering from an academic perspective and what we're giving to the profession. Uh, and we're seeing this from both sides. Graduates will often say, haven't used much from my degree, uh, but I'm working in a team every day. I'm really working on projects. This is something that I'd really like more experience on. We also have a situation in engineering where we have low satisfaction with this piecemeal engineering project. So the academic project within one, one course is often seen as something that you're not really getting into it. You're kind of doing it just for the assessment. You're not getting any value out of it. Um, so why, why do engineers do projects at all? And I think this is similar to most um, professional streams. 
uh, that you will c probably conduct work in your professional life as part of an interdisciplinary team project. Uh, I don't think that this is stuff that you learn on the job. I think that there are some skills that you need to go into the workforce with some foundation around. Uh, projects encourage students to apply knowledge and gain experience. So by, by learning about something, they're going to have to apply, hopefully, what they're learning in their degree, and that maintains some sort of connection back to the content. Uh, but hopefully they're also being extended. So the thing that I haven't applied yet, maybe there's going to be a way that I could go and um, apply that in the future. We've also had a lot of success with capstone project experiences. Uh, and so this is where you try and bring together the four years of an engineering degree at the end and put, in, put themselves into a real project. Um, I should just also note that there's this, this slide deck is online and you can click through the links. And so I've put links through to a bunch of really interesting things. Um, if you just search Chris Brown ANU, you'll find this page. Um, so, when we talk about projects, what we're really talking about is how do we best deliver value through a project? Um, and we've come up with this graphic to try and help describe what value looks like. Uh, and when we talk to our students, we go, well, look, it's on, it's on two axes. You have your project outputs, your development maturity, how good is the project that you're putting together? and you have your governance maturity. So how well are you tracing that? How well are you making decisions? How well could I go and audit your activity? Uh, and what we then have is that as you go out and have a good balance of both governance and um, development, you're in a space that is actually good engineering. Uh, lots of students like to work in this space where I can, I can just go and build this thing, or it'll take me, take me five hours, I'll just do it in my shed by myself, and deliver it to the client, but you hand it over to the client and they're not able to use it, they're not able to, they don't know how to, to turn it on. Uh, for example, they don't know how to maintain it. Likewise, in, in the past, a lot of students have just done bureaucratic projects. So it's just been about delivering that 50 page report. And by just putting together a 50 page report, they're not getting the opportunity that you get when you have to design, build, test, analyze something. Uh, and so we really like to see projects that sit up in that higher um, value space um, around iteration, systems level solutions. Uh, and obviously being undercooked is not, not something that you want to be in a project. Um, so some of the principles that we have around Capstone Project um, are fairly egalitarian. Um, all work should add value, so you shouldn't be doing something if it um, isn't adding value. Um, you should be freed from constraints, you should have respect for everybody involved, uh, there should be trust and autonomy that you're giving to the students. Um, there should be traceability of the work product. And there should be meaningful, many eyes feedback. Um, and I should just note, um, just on the comment on this last slide, that a lot of this work has come out of the collaboration with um, Shane Flint and uh, Lynette Johns Post with their computer science projects. Uh, so this is co-created material, I suppose. Um, so what, um, maybe just a quick, a quick diversion. What does many eyes feedback look like? So um, in a project, we're going to run a number of audits where students will get feedback, and they'll end up with something that looks a bit like this, which is feedback from lots of different people involved in the project, sorry, um, around team member contribution, how the team is working as a, as a team, and beyond how they're doing against <coughs> the performance measures that we've got in those audit spaces. Uh, so for example, here, the client doesn't think their communication is very good. Often what we find is that the client gives that feedback and you go, well, why, why do you think that is? And it's like, oh, we haven't got in contact with them for a month. Uh, and you go, well, what could you do about it? Oh, we're gonna, and next week they come back with this great solution where they've assigned somebody to be the client liaison and they're now communicating each week. Uh, and so these, in, in this particular course, these don't result in grades. These result in information that are given back to the students which allows them to make better decisions. There's also lots of text comments that they get during the project around different um, areas. And so it's a very feedback-rich process, I suppose, is the point I'm trying to get across. Um, so what value do students think they deliver in these projects? So this was a um, survey question. Sorry, it's a bit blurry on the screen there. Um, but we got students to plot their individual teams, or their team's contribution to their client, and their individual's um, contribution to the team on these two plots. And you can see that most students sort of feel like they're in that um, balanced development space, um, but possibly 
we're not giving them the opportunities to go further because the projects run for a semester, um, maybe a year if they continue on, they're not getting the opportunity to go deeper. So by the time you get to the end of the semester, you've delivered <coughs> something maybe to the client, might still have a few bugs, you need to keep ironing, it out, ironing them out for them to be actual, for them to actually be delivering value. Okay, so this takes us to what we're planning to do with our curriculum changes. So um, our course, our program sits within a, um, within a course structure. Um, as you're probably aware of, we're a four year degree, we're an honours degree. Um, students do things in foundations and their major and they also have this thing called the systems engineering core. Uh, and this is where a lot of these projects are delivered. At the moment, I've just represented the different courses by blocks, but at the moment, uh, a lot of the experience is tied together. So within one course, you're going to have content, you're going to learn skills, you're going to have a project. And that those projects, the skills and content, uh, actually the content overlaps a lot because we have different people teaching those different courses. Um, the skills are often overlapping as well, and the projects are often disparate and um, often academic. Uh, because these are all operating in silos. Um, so if we're going to continue that, this would be a bit of a problem with our new um, course design. The way we're trying to reimagine the project structure is that we start thinking about um, projects as a common aspect to all of those courses. And so here I've just conceptualised the diagram uh, where we're going to have a primer that is where the content is delivered, delivered by a subject matter expert, uh, in that, around the curriculum that we're, we're giving them, uh, and that there's going to be a stream of projects that are common to all these courses. There's also going to be some self-study modules, so we know that when you go about your projects, you might need to get a primer on some stats or a primer on some, um, some CAD, uh, some technical drawing, and that you might be able to access that while you're doing your project. Uh, but these projects are where the majority of the learning we think is going to happen. Um, this is quite a different way of thinking about projects for us. So, as I said previously, projects belong to a course. We're thinking now that projects are going to belong to the school, belong to the community, and that the courses feed into those project streams. Uh, in terms of scale, we're talking about 800 students. Um, KEX is in a phase of growth, so we're likely to grow as well. Um, and we're looking at keeping streams to about the 25, 30 people limit. So we're going to have lots of streams that are relevant to students' learning. Uh, and students' interest. Um, the streams will involve um, an academic, so there'll probably be an academic champion for each stream. Uh, each stream will need a, an industry partner uh, and a mentor, so somebody who's a really capable, skilled um, tutor uh, and somebody who can add value to the team, teams that are in that stream. Uh, we're hoping that all majors can feed into that project stream. Uh, and we're also hoping that we're going to see students from other um, faculties. So we would love to see some law students, some business students uh, coming in, science, physics, come, come in and help our projects. Also other research schools. So we've found that many of the projects that we've been running have been actually really successful because they've been outside of engineering. So they've been bringing their expertise to another research school. Um, and we're hoping that our students, by experiencing something that's slightly outside, something that's slightly applied, will actually start thinking about, oh, do I actually want to do a double degree to fit in, to learn more about my project stream? So I might be doing a project with the Research School of Astronomy. Maybe I want to take a physics major so that I can actually do my project better. Um, we're looking, at the moment, we're, we're in a sort of looking for partnership kind of phase. We're about to embark on that. Uh, and we're looking at setting up some trial streams for 2019 to start delivering in 2020. Um, the streams need to be cross-disciplinary or interdisciplinary. They're not going to be fixed to a major. They need to be attractive to a range of students. Um, but these are some of the things that we're throwing around as ideas. Uh, if you see this and go, hey, that sounds really cool, um, come and have a chat. I would love to hear from you. Um, and add to that list as well. Uh, and I suppose there's some details on how to get in touch and how to access this. That's me. Cool. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> You've made my wrap up now, so I'm redundant. Cool. So thank you very much for officially keeping the time. Um, I'd like to open for questions from the floor. We've got quite a bit of time here. Um, available for questions. Yeah, Ben. So, Chris, you mentioned in that slide at the end about. The, the different types of engineering that would 
sorry, back one more, I think. Yeah, this one. Um, and you mentioned that the, the other researchers are even coming from other schools and stuff. Yeah. So is that going to be an explicit, you know, other schools can kind of tap into this, or is that just kind of, as long as it's got an engineering flavour, we can kind of bring in some other expertise type thing? Look, I suppose at this stage it's about overreach. So we would love to see this as a platform for grip projects across the university. Yeah. Um, I think the, the idea of value can be applied anywhere. Um, and I think that you can't just make stuff you need to, and outputs can be all sorts of, all sorts of things. Um, we're just sort of operating in a space that we can control uh, at the moment, but we're talking with um, other schools. So um, the, the ag, ag tech stuff that's happening, we're likely to be having a shared stream in the Fenner School around that. Um, biology um, have had some great projects and are looking to do some of sorts of things. Uh, and so, yeah, we see it as very much a, a open church for sort of collaborating. Um, but yeah, obviously, just scope to our media needs. Sure. Thanks. Um, I assume that engineering is not professional accreditation for engineering. Yeah. Um, and it's how, how do you how do you work with those in the model? Yeah. So I probably think the the thing. So accreditation in our school is often used as this um, stick for not making changes. Yeah, like it's. I, I mm, yeah, it's like, <laughs> oh, we can't do this because of accreditation. But you go and talk to, to our, our Peak Body Engineers Australia, and they're like, yep, you're, you're irrelevant if you don't change. Uh, and so they, our initial discussions have been this is excellent. Um, and, and I suppose the other thing that's happening is that we're uncovering a lot of the overlaps. And so where we're saying that we've ticked it here, ticked it here, ticked it here, we can actually go, well, actually, we only need to tick it once, and we can extend it a bit more. Um, yeah, because we're actually trying to, trying to make it explicit what the students are learning, which is crazy for curriculum development. <laughs> Thanks. As a follow-up, did hmm. you engage early with the accreditation bodies when these ideas started being floated? Um, sure that so I suppose... Going to have to yeah, yeah. Um, so the main impetus for this change has been review. So um, in the last accreditation, the last hour led to a, a review of the major uh, and has fed into this um, design. Currently, um, Kim's overseas uh, on a study tour looking at what they do at, at the other great universities around project learning. Uh, and we're finding that more and more students, are, uh, or more and more universities are pushing this way. So we also, we also don't see Engineers Australia as the, we see it very much as an easy benchmark we can clear, and what we're trying to do is make an attractive offering to sort of a global audience. How do you get the teaching staff up to speed with this? Yeah, so I suppose um, as with any change, probably changing within is the hardest uh, thing. Um, I. I suppose my quick response to that, and I'm happy to talk about it more, is that what we have now isn't functioning, and we're in this position where we need to change. I think that um, new stuff is going to be critical to, to making this work. Um, I think it is going to cost us more in terms of teaching, but I also think that's something we should be investing in. Uh, absolutely. So I really like all that you've had to say. Um, do you see that? Uh, any potential risk where university degrees go so project-based that um, industry says, why aren't we just hiring people out of high school? Yep. Uh, yeah, so if industry says that, then that's something we've got to deal with. Um, the, I suppose an opportunity that, that I see within our local context is that in every course there's a group project, or yeah, there's a group project, there's a, an assignment, there's an exam. And we're also crying out for space in our curriculum to put more technical stuff. And we see this sort of project as a way of actually freeing up space in other technical courses where you can start to go, look, you can actually go deeper because you don't have to throw a group project into every course, which you don't then manage, you don't help, help them to work as a team. It's just a group, it's just an individual assignment that you give them to five people. Uh, and so we actually see this as a, a way of creating space uh, in the curriculum Great. to go deeper. Great. Whether that happens is another. <laughs> Again, our boundary of control. Did you have a question? Um, um, just, I was just thinking, it's probably an answer to this question, but I was just thinking that it sounds like something that 
can grow at a very high level in the university because you only use quite well known for partnering out there mm -hmm. with different um, sectors. And so some of that's something that feeds into that. But you actually have a project based university where all the disciplines work together on things out of the community. Yeah, uh, yeah, and we'd love to see that. And I'll just, I'll just try and throw into the vernacular that the idea of Amplify um, is major project, applied major projects. So this isn't just one semester where you do something. Like in, in, our, in our proposed program, students might be able to work on the same project for three or four years uh, and take it, go real deep on it. Students could also go, hey, I'm really interested in humanitarian engineering, have a go at it and go, oh, actually, I'm much more of a technical person. I hate people. Um, I'm going to just get into the astronomy. Um, and so I think, I think what we're trying to set up is a platform that's open, uh, but obviously pushing it as far as we can from our... Yes, that needs some input from higher up to make Yeah, they're listening. Yeah. Any further questions? The space for another one. Yeah, okay. um, I just was wondering... Um, Slight bias. The portfolio for straight down the side, how does that fit into what, oh, yeah. um, what you're doing? Yeah. So, like, I put lots of hidden little, um, what are they called? Easter eggs uh, in here. <laughs> um, so, one of them was portfolio. Um, some people roll their eyes when they see this, but what, what we're trying to explore is that often one of the biggest pain points of a group project is marks. And what we've experienced with our capstone project, where there really aren't marks associated at, at deliverables, it's about a holistic understanding of the, the work. Um, students this semester actually graded themselves and we were within 5% um, and which we think is a pretty pretty good outcome across 65 students and 12 groups. So what we, what we would like to see is that there's an emphasis on some sort of continuing portfolio where most of the marks for a course like this, structured like this, might, look, might happen. So there might be a small amount um, of grades associated with the primer in terms of a knowledge exam. Can, do you know the stuff you need to know before you go into the project? Um, there might be a small amount of marks around the streams, or a small amount of marks around the modules, but there's going to be something around the reflection which is much larger, much larger, and possibly involves industry. So this is something that you are developing as you um, go along and it becomes this artifact that you can get work out of. Well, that's, that's time. So please join me in thanking Chris and the audience. Please come and harass me uh, yeah. if any of that was interesting.